recording is now in progress. Um, we're in the business here of relieving suffering as actively practicing people on the Buddhist path. That's really what this is about. Our own suffering, the suffering of our loved ones, of the inhabitants of our planet Earth, our future selves, and maybe in some mysterious way even our past selves. So if ever you find yourself confused, don't hesitate to return to this basic intention. How can I relieve the suffering of myself in such a way that may also serve others? I want to talk some about the directions, the ten directions, but maybe more specifically uh, direction, direction, and that direction, especially in our meditation practice is something that's basically good to have. The ten directions, <clears throat> if we can be open and receptive to the ten directions, that's a very wonderful thing. If in our lives we have the capacity to meet what comes our way and respond to it, that's a wonderful thing. If we can see that in any given moment we really have options, that's a wonderful thing. But if our experience in meditation is we go a little bit over here, we go a little bit over there, we go a little bit over here, we go a little bit over there, then we might benefit from simply having one clear direction. And first we must become clear about our one direction. The direction we're going, how we're practicing, what we're doing, off the cushion. And once we do, from that clarity of direction, we really can open up. But it can be very useful to start with a single concrete practice for all of the people sometimes, and for some of the people all the time, I expect. Something to keep you tethered and driving you deeper throughout the variations of feelings, states, and moods. I trained for a brief period of time with Shoto Harada Roshi in Japan and a comment he made that I've quoted a lot after was, whatever we do, whatever we do, and this meant any, any practice in the life, whatever we do, we must pursue it to one point, to one pointedness. The traditional meditation posture that that a lot of the statues are in, with legs crossed, hands crossed, um, from a yoga perspective, is about bringing all of the appendages together to this one point at the tandem, at the hara, really focusing the body in, in one place. Through our practice, through any practice, we can bring the mind down to zero. And it's a taut zero, which was another word Harada Roshi would use, or at least his translator. A zero that can be filled with life, with anything. But in order to bring ourselves down to this vibrant zero, 
it, it's helpful to be clear about how we're practicing. And I think that that's a wisdom that we all inherently have. How we best should practice. A, a, a guiding voice. There's a woman I have a lot of respect for. I met this last year traveling. Um, with whom I was speaking uh, when I was um, uncertain how to respond to something. She said to me that we grow up watching cartoons and in these cartoons the protagonists have an angel that shows up above one shoulder and a demon that shows up shows up above the other shoulder and they whisper two very different pieces of advice and the protagonist doesn't know what to do. And sometimes we feel like that about our decisions. That there's a right decision and a wrong decision. And there'll be implications later down the road. But <clears throat> this friend, uh, Claire, she said that's not the way things are. The truth is that we only have one voice and that voice always knows. If we really know this voice, if we really know this voice and can integrate it, um, we don't need to be afraid of what we encounter because we can trust our response. In Sashin, our, our basic direction is towards awakening, towards opening, towards clarifying, towards loving, towards brightening. into growing pains. And for a time, during this practice of Sashin, we consciously let other directions go. Past, future, wanting things that aren't present, aversions, letting them go to focus on the direction towards present moment awakening. All of these directions, past, future, wanting something else, regretting something I did, they are hypothetical directions. And they are the hypothetical directions that form the concept of our life. But they're hypothetical, they're not, they're not actual. And in their falling away, which happens as we stop feeding them, the true scope of the ten directions that are present right here, right now, becomes apparent, immediately apparent. Japanese Zen Master Ikkyu said, I can remember slightly better than if I'm not going anywhere I can go anywhere but by the end of this talk it'll come back to me if I'm not going anywhere any road's the right one any road is the right one thank you mm -hmm. any of the directions become um, worthy of placing my next step with the weight of my whole body because I know then that the path truly is created by walking. Um, 
uh, a, a young woman who then became my mother wrote a thesis on when does movement become dance and in contemplating dance I asked her some of her points one of which was movement becomes dance when the movement is in relationship to or communication with present moment stimulus music, sound, another person Clowns, of course, dance with all kinds of objects. Rhythmic gymnasts dance with all kinds of objects. Some of us do a little wiggle when we put food in our mouth that we really like. All kinds of dancing. Sound somewhere else touches me on the inside and thus dance is born. This is about experiencing the outside world on the inside. This is about the outside world and the inside world being one. Not just that sound and hearing are one, but that sound and feeling are one. That sound and my being are one. Thus, it moves me. And thus you hear a dog bark and feel something. And perhaps as you walk around during breaks, you can feel distant objects as they touch you on the inside. What's it feel like as I look at that table or at that tree? or even just sitting here in the zendo feeling the sensation of the carpet in the body as you gaze upon it Perhaps you can feel distant objects as you walk around. A table, a bird, the experience of being indoors, the experience of being outdoors. It all changes us on the inside. Zazen calls us to the unchanged as it does to the forever changing. As these are two sides of the same coin. So how do we practice with direction? It's of course helpful to have a clear sense of exactly how we are meditating right now without an expectation about what will happen to us or what it should feel like. A concrete method of practice you can reliably return to if you go astray or become dull or restless and without expectations. That which wants to awaken, that which is awake, is beyond what we refer to as ourselves. And our expectations, our thoughts and our desires very proactively tether us to the familiar. Thus they prevent our expansion into broader and deeper territory that we long to inhabit as spiritual beings.
I often find that there is at least one moment of transition during each session, during which I find no option but to be deep, deeply uncomfortable, often unnervingly so. And I frequently assume that at some point this, this seemingly, seeming rite of passage uh, will no longer be necessary, and yet it continues to seem to. It seems to be some necessary rite of passage through which the resistance of settling settles. And at least for this practitioner, it's been helpful to recognize this, that I may avoid it less and receive it with less and less closed arms each time. I'm speaking more concretely about practice. Let's try a few meditations together. These are ones that I briefly brought up this morning, referencing sky and earth. So this this would be a breath meditation and needn't change your breath meditation in, in any way, but perhaps inform it. And it's the practice of earth breathing sky. Of course, earth arouses more rustic images, but we clearly are seated, seated upon the earth. There's nothing else we're seated upon. And we clearly are of the earth. We feel the weight of the body upon the earth, the contact points where earth meets earth. And while remaining erect, surrender the body into that weight as if and this is only hypothetical you in this very moment were being supported by this massive planet underneath you and feeling the support of the earth below perhaps even with attention reaching deep down into it, into her to really be in relationship with this massive rock that has always been your home. Sitting so Notice how the sky moves in and out of the body as your own breath. Breathing in as you always have this most essential nutriment, more essential than any other tangible thing to your life.
and for which you've never lacked. And notice, as the air comes in, how it feeds your earthen body. And if you wish, after the exhalation, wait. Just notice how the body craves the breath again. And thus, we as beings are the very relationship between earth and sky. Similarly, we can recognize the sky element that we are. Not the hardness of the body, but the space of the body. Not the stuff of the room, but the space of the room. And being this space, listen to the sounds of the earth. A white electronic noise, barking, shuffling, cars. And what's the experience of sky as it listens to the earth? Holds all the sound. And could any sound disturb the sky? And the sounds occur 
outside of you or inside of you. One final meditation to try and touching into the earthen human heart and the body. <coughs> in which always at least cares for its own protection and safety, and thus has a foundation of love. And please breathe this love and care out into the sky, into the space, into the room and beyond. Connecting this human heart with the space of the planet and the beings upon her. And so even just sitting here, we function as the vessel between earth and sky. Between form and formless. Between the known and the unknown. And from this, please listen to your own personal aspiration, which, which is personal and so much more than that. And from this place, really trust whatever has brought you here is practicing you listen to that and own that that you may practice clearly with with your whole body and mind all your sincerity that you may really use this time, this precious time, very well.